How is it that our government has the confidence to be violating and violating an inalienable right after inalienable right with impunity? From where does it get its confidence? The answer comes from what is one of our most serious national vices, an obsessive love of secrecy. More than any other parliamentary democracy, more than any other comparable nation state, we have consolidated within our structure of how we govern ourselves, consolidated a structure to ensure where the state doesn't wish us to know, we will never know. That's how it's meant to be. We're in the 21st century now, and yet we still operate as nation states in the world. That's how we configure ourselves. Curiously, curiously, the passage of history still retains the concept so strongly of the nation state. And the nation state takes upon itself the thesis that it is the protector of the safety of its citizens. That's the mantle it assumes for itself. And in doing so, it takes upon itself the absolute aspects of absolute power. This is the rationale is perpetrated upon us. We, the state, are in charge of protecting your safety. In protecting your safety, there is much in order to protect your safety that we can't tell you. It's because of national security. You have to trust us, you have to pay deference to us because we are your protectors. And it's this vicious circle of being told that we have to give deference, that we have to go on trust because it will be a violation of national security if we're told the secrets. We don't know the secrets, so we can't challenge them. And we have in this country, more than any other country, consolidated a structure of secrecy. And so that means when there is a moment, as I believe there is now, of moral legal crisis, that it may very well be that we pass through it without ever being able to bring anyone to book. And the crisis is this, we are complicit in the worst of crimes. We are complicit in subjecting people to rendition. We are complicit in the torture of people for the past eight years around the world. If you talk to men who have come back from the dark side, who have come back from Bag Bagram Air Base. They will describe in January 2002, in the cold of an Afghan winter, in Bagram Air Base, so called, a disused air hangar cut into cages with barbed wire in which human beings 
you are placed, sitting or standing in stress positions. That means obliged to retain a position for hour after hour after hour until the pain is intolerable. Or hanging from the wrists, from cages. Sitting with no clothes, bar a thin shirt, thin trousers. Sitting or standing in stress positions, not allowed to talk to each other. The first 20 after the first month who moved from Bagram to Kandahar, all suffering from frostbite. And above the interrogation rooms, you could hear the screams. And walking along between the cages, very clearly, British agents, as the men describe, wearing their North Face jackets. Agents who later, although they never gave their names, were obliged in an affidavit to the court to give their general description. One of them, witness B, Intelligence Agent Running Section. Why would you be strolling through the cages in Bagram Air Base? Because you had men there. You could say, if you don't work for us, worse is going to happen. Work for us and you may Get out of here. The product from the interrogation rooms, the product from the screams, thank you very much, we'll have that back in England. And by the way, can we help you any more? Can we get you any information from England that would help you ask questions more? Can we do that? Here's the file. The Binyam Muhammad judgment in the High Court says, in the usual way, the Home Office file was sent. The usual way. And we find, again, by accident, utterly prohibited by the Torture Convention, by the Refugee Convention, that refugees in England perceived to be Islamic dissidents they're asylum files. When you apply for asylum, there is a marking that says your claim will be treated in confidence. Asylum files have been sent to Algeria and Jordan. The case of one man, Belmarsh Prison, asked to give a specific medical report. The prison asked to make a medical report to be sent to Jordan. Why? so he could be tortured the more effectively. So here we are, in this moment of moral, legal catastrophe. And it's a moment when you would think any government will be feeling acutely vulnerable. These are resignation issues. These are issues that should bring any administration to an end. This is the worst of the worst. This is complicity in war crimes, complicity in breaches of the Geneva Convention, complicity in torture. But here we are, no heads have rolled. This government may be vulnerable, but it doesn't feel vulnerable for that reason.